uh, Thanksgiving, the U.S. holiday that celebrates the event when the English colonists, also known now as pilgrims, held a feast um, to thank the Native Americans for helping them survive the harsh winter. Food, fun, prayers, everyone living in harmoniously and sitting across the table giving thanks for what they have. <laughs> Not exactly. When I was living abroad, I did celebrate Thanksgiving, and I had a lot of people ask me you know, why I was celebrating and what exactly it was about. And you sort of realize that their understanding of Thanksgiving comes primarily from like myths perpetuated through media, such as television, movies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what exactly is Thanksgiving and why does the U.S. celebrate it? Nowadays, it's more of a day where you look back and you give thanks for everything that you have. But the concept of you know, giving thanks is not new. Native Americans and Europeans have been celebrating you know, Thanksgiving or what they would call harvest days or, where you, you know, or harvest feasts where you give thanks for the bountiful harvest that you have acquired from the year have been common throughout centuries. Canada has their own Thanksgiving Day. The Caribbean islands also celebrate. The Philippines celebrate. Many other countries celebrate as well. But in the United States, Thanksgiving is a little more complicated, and that's due to our history. So how did Thanksgiving come about? In order to answer this, we have to delve back into history a little bit. So it is true, the Mayflower brought the pilgrims from Plymouth, England, to what is now Plymouth, Massachusetts in 1620. Where it gets a little confusing is why the pilgrims migrated. The story we're told as children is that the pilgrims went to the what is now the United States for religious freedom. That is not entirely true. Pilgrims actually did have religious freedom when they were in Holland. The term pilgrim isn't even what they call themselves. Pilgrims refer to themselves as separatists. The term pilgrim didn't come into use until I think the late 1800s. What separatists were was an extreme form of Puritanism. They were extremely critical of the Church of England and wanted to abolish it, get rid of it. Since they couldn't do that, they decided to separate themselves entirely and move to a different location where they could practice their own religion. In order to establish this theocracy, and also because they were looking for land opportunities, they decided to go to North America. Uh, a few years back, an English comedian and actor by the name of Stephen Fry did a program where he traveled all 50 states. When he was in Massachusetts, he met a professor at Harvard who explained to him that the pilgrims didn't come to the United States so they could you know, escape persecution. They, in fact, came to the United States to persecute, which is a bit of an exaggeration, but not too far from the truth. When the pilgrims arrived in what is now Plymouth, Massachusetts, they were surprised by how well cultivated and fertile the land was. And that's because the Patsixa tribe, a branch of the Wampanoag people, had already lived there. To us, the most famous of the Patuxent Native Americans was Tisquantum, better known as Squanto. He was captured by the Englishmen who arrived to North America in 1614, was sold into slavery in Spain, traveled to England, and through that period of time he managed to learn English. When he finally managed to return back to North America in 1620, he actually found his entire tribe completely wiped out due to smallpox, which the English had brought over and the Native Americans had never been exposed to, therefore had no immunities. Squanto was largely credited for helping the pilgrims when they first arrived because he was able to act as a translator. He was able to also help them find the you know, best places to fish and how to cultivate the food that they had available. But that's really where those historical facts end and things start to get into more mythological territory. So it is true that the pilgrims held a feast as a thank you, and it is also true that Native Americans did participate in the feast. However, there is no recorded evidence um, within the English colonists recordings because they did keep very meticulous um, writings and records of everything that they ever invited the Native Americans to celebrate and to join them. And there's also no history, no oral history within Wampanoag um, oral traditions that say anything about them ever going to the feast. We do know that there is one, we do know that they went, but it might have been more for diplomatic reasons, you know, two different people getting together, just simply ha trying to have good relations. It could also be that because the Native Americans were so close by and they also um, cultivated 
within the same vicinity that they simply got invited over for, you know, a nice meal. The feast lasted three days and had plenty of food, fun, games, and prayers. Shocking fact, there was no turkey at that feast. Um, while turkeys are native to North America, the typical food eaten in the New England region would probably be closer along lines to deer, lobster, different types of squash, pumpkin, that sort of thing. There is also a little bit of a rivalry between Virginia and New England as to who gets credit for celebrating the first Thanksgiving because in actuality, Virginia had had a Thanksgiving celebration in 1619, two years prior to the Pilgrims having one in 1621. However, the Thanksgiving held in Virginia was more of a religious event as a way to give thanks to God for them having survived. It was less, it wasn't necessarily a secular event like the Thanksgiving harvests that the Pilgrims held, which is a lot closer to what is celebrated today. So when is Thanksgiving and why do we celebrate it that day? Well, today, Thanksgiving is always celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November but it took a very long time for us to get that final date that we celebrate today. Thanksgiving or harvest festivals had been celebrated in New England since the 1660s and later spread to other parts of the country. Um, however, there was no official day to celebrate it. People had different times where they would celebrate it. Some people in November, some people in September, some people as late as January. It was George Washington who proclaimed the first nationwide Thanksgiving on November 26, 1789. Abraham Lincoln then proclaimed it an official holiday in 1863 as a way to try to unify the North and the South, which at the time was divided due to the American Civil War. The day was officially set in stone to the fourth Thursday in November, thanks to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1939. He did this as a way to sort of boost Christmas sales um, and to help retailers due to the Great Depression. And it was approved by Congress in 1941. So what does Thanksgiving mean to us? Well, that's a complicated question, and the answer is different depending on who you ask. If you want to keep it general, Thanksgiving marks the beginning, or the unofficial beginning, of what we know as the holiday season. For many Native Americans, it is the Day of National Mourning, a protest held since 1970 that serves as a reminder of the suffering they've endured and continue to endure to this day. For my part, I chose to stick with facts to help debunk some of the myths of Thanksgiving and help people gain a wider understanding of why we celebrate Thanksgiving in the US and how it came about. I read an article recently about Thanksgiving and one of the lines that I particularly enjoyed was something along, uh, we have the freedom to choose whether or not we buy into media regalia. So yes, you can choose Thanksgiving to eat a, a lot of food and do a lot of shopping and just enjoy in the celebrations and the festivities. Or you can use this holiday to have a discussion with your family about you know, immigration and religious persecution and bullying, land grabs, and help debunk these myths and stereotypes that have been perpetuated throughout the years about Thanksgiving. So for those who don't celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope this helps give you a slightly better understanding of the history. And for those who do, I hope this serves as a little food for thought to go along with that plate of food that you will be getting. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye.